Gentlemen, yeah. since the initial discoveries in the 1990s, principally yours, uh, now we have a tremendous catalog of worlds orbiting other stars, mostly stars that are relatively near us in the Milky Way galaxy, but we're expanding outward. Now there are several thousands of such planets known. Could you talk a little bit, gentlemen, about the techniques? How do we discover these planetary systems? And what leads you with the techniques to go after certain kinds of planets that may be more of interest from that oldest of questions, perhaps, uh, in humanity, are we alone here? So, uh, the first point we have to mention is the fact that uh, if, let's imagine, you are relatively far from the solar system and you look it with some instrument, and you have the sun and you have a small dot, let's say Jupiter, the biggest planet, and Jupiter is not producing luminosity, but reflecting only a small, tiny part of the luminosity of the sun. And the ratio is one billion. So immediately when you are at some distance, you are like this. Let's imagine you have a small light, one billion, billion times smaller than this light. You have no chance to see it. So this was a difficulty to, to discover planet. And also we have to consider that planets are relatively small compared to stars. For example, the, the Earth is something like 300,000 times small, uh, lighter uh, than the Sun. So, so what we have used 25 uh, more years ago is to try to measure the, velocity, the change of the velocity of the stars. So if you have a planet like orbiting like this, you cannot see the planet, but you can maybe detect the small wobble of the velocity of the star. So you need to build an instrument to measure extremely small change of the velocity of stars. So this was what we used to discover the first one. And then after, we have discovered several hundred of planets and our colleagues in different places also. So this was the first technique. But as I mentioned before, we have discovered planets with extremely short period. When we say short period, it signifies that the planet orbits the star extremely close to the star. So you have a good chance sometimes to have an orbit, uh, uh, an eclipse. So it's, we are using the, the terminology of transit. So sometimes when the planet cross the disk of the, the star, you have a small decrease of the luminosity of the star. So this is a new technique, and this was absolutely fantastic technique because this technique was used to discover, I don't know, thousands of planets with different space missions. You have planet uh, Kepler, Coro, you have a lot of different space missions, having provided a huge number of, of new planetary system. And not, not only stars with one planet, but we have discovered a lot of stars with several planets. So you have one planet, a second planet, a third planet, and so on. So you have to disentangle this, this uh, signal, and you discover it's a very complex uh, planetary system. So this is typically the most, OK, you have other techniques, but these are the two most important ones. And what is very interesting, the Doppler techniques, the change of the velocity, give access to the measurement of the mass of the planet, but the technique of the transit give access to the, si to the size of the planet. So if you have the mass and the size, you can determine the density of the planet. And so we have direct proof that it's gases, giant planet, or rocky planet, or things like this. So we can start to do physics to understand the, the, all this complexity of planetary system. And this was a direct proof that the 51 peg, for example, is a planet. Because still four years after, some people, some colleagues, was doubting that it was really a planet. So no, we are sure it's a planet. Yeah. I will simply add to Michel's comment that the, the technique that has been used 30, 40 years ago, the Doppler, uh, Doppler velocity technique, is still the same. We are still considering a similar number of spectral lines for cross-correlation 
four, five, six thousand spectral lines in typical solar type star to detect that. But the technology is incredibly different. Nowadays, we get to positions down to 10 already centimeter per That's second. Similar. That's where we are. So we can detect Earth like nearly Earth like planets, Earth twins. And, the, and that's all thanks to technology. Vacuum chambers, better detectors. Now we have an incredibly precise spectrographs working on VLT, etc. So the technology is actually driving this field in all different methods. It can be microlasing, it can be any uh, direct imaging, direct imaging of planets. So using chronography, etc., adaptive optics. So as I always said, that astronomy is a technology-driven field. A lot, I would say. Uh, technology makes a huge difference in a very short time scale, 20, 30 years, and you are already in a different domain.